Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. First and foremost, shout out to all the subscribers and members out there, all my viewers. You guys are the real supporters of the channel. You made draft week and draft weekend um, some of the, the best content um, I've, I've put out at that time. You guys supported it wholeheartedly. You guys tuned into the streams. You guys were absolutely amazing, man. The build up to the draft and all that, absolutely amazing. Can't thank you guys enough. And here we are now in the aftermath of the draft uh, and also undrafted free agency. And it's kind of a lull as to what the Giants are doing, you know. Rookie minicamp, by the way, guys, is going to be from May 14th to the 17th, I believe. So keep your eye out for that. Mark that on your calendars if you wish. That's definitely going to be an interesting three to four days to take a look at the Giants rookies and get our first taste of them on the field, even though it's going to be, you know, um, not that really much of an intense type of practice, but it's going to be the first look nonetheless. And of course, the title of this video, I'll just get right into it. With the offensive line now, well, it's not we're going to see any offensive linemen on the field in rookie minicamp except for the undrafted free agent guys, you know, in um, I think it was Heggie and Burton, you know, the, um, the other one out of UCLA and Baylor. Well, well those are going to be the only offensive linemen we see. And um, like, the, like the title of the video says, the Giants are confident in their own line. All right, they're extremely confident in their own line. The third round of the NFL draft showed how confident they were in their o-line now i'm gonna say what i've said in streams since the draft and i think i mentioned it um in my last video as well with the undrafted free agents the giants were not going to pick an offensive lineman just to pick an offensive lineman they were not going to force a pick and they weren't going to take anybody that they believed you know had no chance of winning a starting job from one of our guards in Lemieux or Hernandez. I wanna say it's Lemieux because I, I do still believe in Will Hernandez quite a bit. They were not gonna do that. They had their eyes on two guys. Both of those guys were unavailable at the um, 42nd pick, at pick 50, and then would have been unavailable at pick 76, which is why they traded up and then they got a guy who they had hang ranked really high on their own personal big board in Robinson. And in fact, Robinson was a guy they were looking at at pick 42 and pick 50 as well. So when he dropped there for the Giants, for Gettleman and for Judge, it was just too good a value to not try and get him in their own opinion, right? But the Giants weren't gonna pick somebody just to pick somebody. That's how much they believe in this offensive line. What they're basically saying to you is there was only a couple of players in this draft, um, a couple of interior offensive linemen to be specific, that had a legitimate chance of beating out Shane Lemieux for a starting job. And honestly, I could believe that. I can see where they're coming from. Shane Lemieux got a whole year of experience under his belt. He has a way to progress and a way to go, but he's still better than majority of the offensive linemen in the draft because of the fact that he's played a whole year in the NFL and he played it as a starter for um, a good amount of that year against good competition. That puts him ahead of a lot of guys. So I can believe it when they say that. Like I could genuinely believe that Shane Lemieux, a fifth round pick from last year, who the Giants were so high on the fact that he did start a couple of times and he did do well, you know, for the most part, I can believe that he's better than 90% of these offensive linemen, interior offensive linemen um, in the draft. And I feel like sometimes a lot of us, including myself, fall in love with too many of these prospects and you know we for some reason rate them above actual nfl players um but the giants of course that's why they get paid the big bucks and gelman and judge they don't although i will say the one guy that i did want a lot was one of the guys they had their eyes on in landon dickerson um but that's what the draft shows us the draft showed us how confident they are in this o-line and because of that in my opinion you know, you can call this a hot take if you want. I don't think the Giants are signing any type of offensive lineman free agents moving forward. I think the Giants are done in terms of gathering who they think should compete for offensive line in the offseason. Now, unless something crazy like, I don't know, like a 2020 Pro Bowl level interior guy, guard or center gets released for some reason and then the Giants have a chance to sign him, they sign him. Unless something like that happens, I don't see them going after a guy like Trey Turner, who, yes, was at one point a Pro Bowler, but you go and you look at his performances over like the past three years from 2018 onwards, he's kind of declined. He's not the guy he once was in his first four years of his career. And people could say, well, you know, maybe a chain of scenery can help him. You know, he is a proven guy, unlike, you know, our rookies or well now second year players. 
And the biggest thing that is he's a Gelman guy, the Gelman connection. He could come in and maybe win that job and do a great job for us. To the people that say that, I'll say, well, the rookies that we have now becoming second year players that we have on the offensive line are also Gettleman guys. You know what I mean? Like we constantly um, give the offensive linemen credit, you know, guys like Trey Turner, guys like Daryl Williams, you say, we say these were great Gettleman picks, great late round finds, you know, they could be really good for this team. When we have our own late round finds that, you know, we should just give them a chance to develop. Shane Lemieux is a definition of a Gettleman offensive lineman, picked in the fifth round. Big Mauler, a little bit developmental, is a starter, could be a starter, I should say. Kind of the definition of that. Another guy that matches that, Nick Gates, undrafted free agent. Extremely late round, so late that he wasn't even picked. Fine by Gettleman. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? We give the credit to guys like Williams and Turner, yet we kind of don't want to give a chance to our own. And I'm guilty of that as well. And maybe I'm buying a little bit much into Gettleman and Judge right now and their belief in the O-line. But uh, if you think I am, I'll tell you this. I have to see how it performs on the field before I believe it. I have to see, you know, Shane Lemieux actually get some pass blocking improvement and progression before I start believing in this line completely. But at the end of the day, three-fifths, three of our five starters going into this year were rookies last year. It only makes sense that the three rookies improve. If they get worse, it's a problem, right? But the chances of three rookies getting worse is highly unlikely. And with the addition of guys like Rob Sale as our new offensive line coach and the former Giants offensive line coach and Pat Flaherty brought back now as basically an offensive line assistant, these are guys that were brought in, it seems like, to help coach and help grow our current lineman setup, especially with a guy like Flaherty who was with the Giants during both of our Super Bowl runs in the 2000s and then 2010s. He was the one that coached guys like Chris Snee, Sean O'Hara, David Deal, all of them, you know, that became Pro Bowlers for the Giants and even helped lesser named guys become really good at their positions like Rich Suber and Kareem McKenzie. And we got to remember, it's not like all of these guys were first, second round picks. A lot of them were mid-round guys. And I've said this consistently on the channel before, you don't need to have the best guy at every position for an offensive line unit for it to work. You just need to have really good guys at the positions and they need to be great together. It's really a big machine, it's a sum of the parts. If one cog is working well, the cog next to it needs to be oiled up and working well as well. But to wrap that all up, basically my point is the Giants, you know, particularly Gettleman, Joe Judge, the coaching staff, it seems the entire organization, they strongly believe in the linemen that they have here already. They believe in Andrew Thomas, Will Hernandez, Nick Gates, Shane Lemieux, and Matt Perr. And that is, of course, you know, what we're going to assume the starting lineup is going to be at some point during the 2021 season, if not the beginning of the 2021 season. Given what happened during the draft, I'd say that they're, you know, placing all their bets on them. And that's why I don't really think we're going to sign any free agent on linemen. And maybe, you know, we as fans should start to buy in a little bit as well. But of course, once again, for me personally, I'm going to have to see it before I truly do believe it. That's it for now. Let me know what you guys think. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.